In lesson 7.5, we're learning about three properties of logarithms. So for the first property, if the argument has a product, you are allowed to break it up into two separate logs using addition. Those two separate logs will have the same base, and then the parts of the product each have their own log now. If the argument has a quotient, you would break that up with subtraction. And then, if the argument has an exponent, that exponent can move to the front and become multiplying. If you guys remember this problem from yesterday's notes, we had log base 6, 6 to the 4th power. That's saying what exponent turns 6 into 6 to the 4th? That's obviously 4. And if we move the 4 to the front, you still get 4 because it's what exponent turns 6 into 6? That's 1, which gets multiplied by 4. So both sides of this equation equal 4. All right, so for these problems, you're going to find a log that usually you would need a calculator, but you're just going to use these two pieces of information to find the value. So whatever argument they give you, you need to break that into um, a product using only threes, sevens, and powers of 12. All right, so 21, we know that 21 is 3 times 7. So then I can break that up using the product property. This is going to become log base 12 of 3 plus log base 12 of 7. We're given both of those values, 0.4421 and 0.78. 3, 1. I hope you guys can add by hand because this will not be in the calculator section. Otherwise, you could just put the original problem into the calculator. So these two numbers added together make 1.2252. Okay, for number 12, we can change 49 into 7 times 7. Or we can make it 7 squared. Now we could use the power property. So by the power property, I can move the 2 to the front. And now it's just 2 times. And we're given that this is 0 0.7831. Multiplying that by 2, I get 1.5. 662. So they give you log base 12 of 3 and log base 12 of 7. We cannot break down 36 into 3s and 7s, but what we can do is we can break 36 into 3 times 12. So 3 was given, and then we don't need a calculator to do log base 12 of 12, because 12 is a power of 12. So we're going to break this up using the product rule. We were given that log base 12 of 3 is 0 0.4421. And we know that the exponent that turns 12 into 12 is 1. Adding those together, we get 1.4421. For number 4, we're going to use the quotient rule. So we break up a quotient with subtraction.
27 is 3 to the 3rd. Log base 12 of 49, that looks familiar. We just found that on number 2. So I'm just going to plug in the answer to number 2 right now. The exponent for the argument can move to the front. So we're going to multiply 3 times 0 0.4421. So this is going to become 1.3263. And it looks like our answer is going to be negative. We know that it has to be a negative exponent because this number is smaller than 1. So we know that 12 to the 0 is 1. So if we want to make 12 something smaller than 1, it'll take a negative exponent to do that. Alright, so subtracting those two, we get negative 0.2399. All right, 441, we see that in math a lot. That is a perfect square. It is 21 squared. So I can move the 2 to the front. On number 1, we found that this equals 1.2252. So to save us from having to do all the work from number 1 again, we're just going to plug in number 1's answer. And so multiplying by 2, we would get 2.4504. All right. Now we're going to use these properties to solve equations. So using the product property but working backwards, we have addition. And you need to make sure these logs have the same base. So they both have a base of 5 and you're adding them. So because of that, you can multiply their arguments together. 4 times 2x is 8x. So, since the bases are equal, then the arguments have to be equal. We get x equals 3. The directions say to check your answer. All you really need to do is just make sure that all the arguments are not negative. Or, yeah. Actually, the arguments aren't even allowed to be 0. So you have to check that the arguments are all positive. Well, that doesn't have a variable, so it's obviously positive. So plugging in 3 there, 2 times 3 is positive, so it works. And this last argument doesn't even have a variable, so that's obviously positive 24. So remember the rules. The, the base has to be positive and is not allowed to equal 1. The argument just has to be positive. All right, so we're going to use the quotient rule on number 7. Log base 6 for both of them, so we can divide the arguments. Now that the logs have the same base, we know their arguments have to equal each other. 2x equals 3x minus 3, which means that x equals 3. Alright, checking our answer. If I plug in 3, that will be a positive argument. If I plug in 3 there, that will be a positive argument.
For number eight, we can use the power rule. So the number in front of the log can move back and become an exponent. We can get rid of the logs. Looks like we have a quadratic. Moving everything to the left side, we get x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals 0. So if we factor that, we get x plus 5, x minus 2. So x could equal negative 5 or x could equal positive 2. Checking our answer. If you plug in negative 5 here, that's a negative argument. So negative 5 does not work. Plugging in 2 seems to be fine. We would get an argument of 3 and an argument of 9. So only 2 works out of these two answers. Okay, number nine, we're going to use the quotient rule again. So if you guys want to just skip the first step, we can already see that it's going to be c plus 3 over 4c minus 1. That equals 5. c plus 3 equals 20c minus 5. 19c equals 8. So c equals 8 over 19. Let's plug in. If I plug in 8 over 19, well that's addition of two positive numbers. That's definitely going to be positive. 4 times 8 over 19. 4 times 8 over 19 is 32 over 19. That's bigger than 1. So that will also lead to a positive answer. So again, 4 times 8 over 19 is 32 over 19. That's bigger than 1, so if you subtract 1, it'll still be positive. On the back, we're checking if these equations are the correct application of the properties on the front. So looking at number 10, the argument has a product. They broke it up using addition. So this one is true. On number 11, they have, a, they have a power in the argument. We learned that you can move the exponent to the front. So that looks like the, or that looks like a correct application of the power rule. All right, over here we have addition in the argument. You are not allowed to break up addition in the argument. So that one's false. This would have been correct if we had 2z in parentheses. Okay, for the last problem we have an equation. So it looks like the intensity of sound is tripled. The intensity of sound is R. So we started with this equation. And then what's going to happen is the R value is going to be tripled we want to know what the increase will be. 
So to find the increase, you subtract the numbers. So we learned that numbers in the front can be moved to the back and vice versa. So I'm going to take those and move those to become exponents. And now, if we see what's happening, we are subtracting two logs that have the same base. So you're allowed to combine those together using the quotient rule. This is going to be 3r to the tenth in the numerator. The denominator is going to have r to the tenth. Okay, so simplifying the numerator, I know the numerator is going to become 3 to the 10th times r to the 10th. The denominator just has r to the 10th. So now I could cancel out the r to the 10th. And so our answer is going to be log base 10 of 3 to the 10 we can move the exponent back to the front and then we need a calculator for only this problem so on the calculator all you have to type in is 10 log 3 so if you do that you get 4.77 and the units are decibels on the calculator they assume that the base is 10, so when the base is 10, you can just use the log button.